We're going to start where you thought we would. Our list tonight reminds us of a huge disparity between the words used to describe wars and the reality of war. Words like victory and mission accomplished, which Mr. Trump has embraced on Twitter today. It stands as uh, stark distinctions from the videos that we have been receiving from places in Syria like Raqqa. Have you seen Raqqa? You see, for the people of Raqqa, there will be no parades. There will be no celebrations. In fact, they're pretty much left with essentially, look at this, no city. We were forced to leave our homes because of ISIL. When we returned, we found everything reduced to rubble. Look at all the devastation. Raqqa is a ghost city. We are living in the midst of destruction. We feel completely abandoned. Everything around has been destroyed. Life here is horrible. The city lies in rubble. We have to pay to remove the debris with our own money. There's no running water, so we have to buy it in barrels. The U.S. coalition caused the destruction of Raqqa, and it has a responsibility to rebuild the city. We need their help with restoring the water supply and clearing the rubble. I found a mine on the street near my house. My friend and I tried to detonate it from a distance, but it didn't go off. We thought the mine didn't work and walked towards it. It exploded. My friend was killed. I survived. Life in Raqqa. $230 million was recently allocated to try and repair places like Raqqa in the uh, war-torn parts of Syria, but State Department officials are saying they will not repair the city, and that money is probably going to be used uh, elsewhere, at least until further notice. And then there's the question of money that was uh, used, billions of dollars that was spent to try and train some of the uh, Syrian rebels to fight for the U.S. cause. The actual number, it turns out, that were trained is embarrassingly slight, as we learn in the Senate hearing where a general not long ago was asked, how many did we actually train with this money? Can you tell us what the total number of trained fighters remains? Uh, it's a small number, and uh, uh, the ones that are in the fight is, uh, is, is we're talking four, four or five. So. Four or five? Not 400, not 500, not four or 5,000, four or five people. How many we trained? Um, that's what we have to show for the billions of dollars that were spent under the heading of Syrian military training. Here is a conversation that I had just earlier today with Hadil Wise. She is a Middle East expert, an author, and a journalist regarding what happened today in Syria. That's the point. As, as an American, yeah. I obviously am so tired of seeing my country, our country men, our soldiers, our men and women in battle, going over there and fighting in these wars that to most of us make no sense. There, 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 there's so many factions, so many different groups fighting each other. I think most Americans will look at what this president has done and herald him yeah. for making a decision to finally just get the hell out, pardon the vernacular. Do, yeah. you, do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, of course, but this unconditional withdrawal was not the answer because now we're benefiting our enemies. President Trump wanted to do all it takes to destroy the abilities of Iran. The main division with the Europeans was we want to stop the Iranian behavior in the region, so how can we stop it? But, when but, but how do you put that back in the bottle? We, I mean, we went into Iraq hoping to democratize them. It didn't work. We strengthened Iran when we did that. Now we're going back into Iraq to try and fight the Iranian factions. And then because that has spread into Syria, now we send our troops into Syria to try and buttress the same thing that we were doing in Iraq. Where does it end? The example in Syria was successful. We were not very involved. He could have, he, he was able 
to pull back the troops, but not in this way. He ordered that in less than 24 hours, he wants all the State Department employees in Syria to be back. He wants to, to just say, I, I don't want to do any, uh, to put any leverage for the United States in this region, and this is not good. It will hunt us back again. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.